Prosecuting Attorney's Qualifications Commission is evident due to the actions of the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. My lawsuit against Fani Willis, Marvin Arrington, and the Fulton County Ethics Board stems from this necessity. Stalking often misunderstood involves repeated unwanted behavior causing fear or distress. It's a serious issue affecting millions annually, with most victims knowing they're stalkers. The Netflix documentary, Can I Tell You a Secret, sheds light on this issue. Stalking behaviors include harassment, intimidation, and even violence. Despite its prevalence, misconceptions persist hindering support for victims. Stalkers exploit various tactics, from relentless calls to spreading rumors. They often target former partners and engage in something called proxy stalking, which involves third parties. Victims endure emotional trauma and the risk of violence is significant, especially with intimate partner stalkers. The failure to address stalking perpetuates the cycle of abuse, highlighting the importance of legal measures like the Prosecuting Attorney's Qualification Commission, or PAC. It's crucial to support victims and hold accountable those who neglect their duties, ensuring justice for everyone. Stalking is repetitive. Stalkers create a pattern of repeated unwanted attention and contact towards a person. It's an obsession I don't believe they themselves even realize. Their focus is unrelenting towards the victim. A stalker harasses and intimidates a person over and over without ceasing. Examples of stalking are showing up at someone's home or their job uninvited. If Fonnie Willis investigated my case, she would have spoken to my secretary at the Emory Healthcare, who would have shared with her, my stalker repeatedly came to my job to harass me. Repeatedly calling victims at unreasonable amount of times. It could be up to 50 times a day, but they'll make up excuses or lie as to why they had to call you 50 times. Stalkers will cash app you money unsolicited, and you have to block them from sending you money. Stalkers will repeatedly wait for you at your car and surprise you with the, I was just in the area. Stalkers will also call you from other people's numbers once you block them. Stalkers will leave threatening voicemails on your phone, vacillating between thoughts of undying love and hate if you do not call them back. They'll send you letters to, your victim, to their victim's job in an effort to try to get them fired. They will try to blackmail you. They file motions to appeal their restraining order because they truly believe they are not a stalker. Stalkers get other unknowing and knowing third parties to harass and intimidate you. Proxy stalking. Stalkers will stalk former spouses, friends, sexual partners, or people they sexually assaulted. They spread rumors about their victims and they do everything they can to belittle and humiliate their victims. Once they realize they can't have you disgust for their victims sets in and they try to destroy the person's life. When people repeat rumors they heard from a stalker, they are unknowingly participating in stalking the victim. There are approximately 13.5 million victims of stalking in the United States every year, and I want to give you a few stats. 67% know the person stalking them. They aren't strangers, as most believe. One in three women and one in six men are stalked. 16% of transgender people, 9% know their stalker from work. 75% receive unwanted calls. 57% have their stalkers show up unexpectedly. 52% are surveillance, 40% are targeted by intimate partners. They threaten to share intimate images of their victims. 74% of former intimate stalkers report violence. One in five use weapons to threaten or harm their victims. It increases for intimate partners by threefold to make it a fatality. 
of the most of them will post inappropriate things and personal information of their victims online. Some common misconceptions. They're strangers. They're not. They will eventually stop. If you ignore it, they will stop. Online stalking is not as bad as physical stalking. For those listening, there's a 24-7 National Domestic Violence Hotline, which is 1-800-799-SAFE or 7233. There's also a 24-7 National Sexual Assault Hotline, 1-800-656-HOPE. Victims of domestic violence and stalking deserve to be heard, especially when faced with reluctance from authorities like the district attorney, Bonnie Willis. The fear and anxiety victims endure are compounded by the constant vigilance required to protect themselves. In my own experience seeking justice from Fulton County DA Bonnie Willis, I dis discovered concerning actions that were brought to my attention from an investigative reporter. It revealed collusions between my stalker, aided by Fulton County Commissioner Marvin Arrington, who also served as my stalker's personal attorney. This conflict of interest is alarming as it compromises the very justice system meant to protect victims. Despite presenting numerous witnesses, DA Willis did not interview one single witness. Over 20 were presented, including my pastor after he joined my church. This pattern of neglect and misconduct persisted, violating my rights under Marcy's law as she offered a plea deal without consenting me. The passage of the Prosecuting Attorney's Qualification Commission is a vital step towards accountability, providing recourse for citizens failed by the system. Fulton County Commissioner Marvin Arrington chose to take a stalking case against a state representative all while he oversees and appropriates funds to the DA's office. As a criminal defense attorney, Fulton Commissioner Marvin Arrington defends his clients in the same courtroom he appropriates and has unlimited access to the judges. DA Willis is charged to represent victims in Fulton County, the very people Commissioner Arrington's private clients seek to dismiss claims against. Two attorneys, family friends, law school classmates, opposing each other with one having the authority to chop up charges to benefit the other, and one with the authority to vehemently advocate for funding. A perfect storm for an unknowing victim. During jail calls, Commissioner Arrington and my stalker plotted various actions, including manipulating judges, leveraging political influence, and conversations that were had between Commissioner Arrington with Fani Willis before she was even sworn into office about my case. Commissioner Arrington discusses getting favors from the chief jailer of the Fulton County Jail on behalf of my stalker and the criminal behavior of other elected officials, past and present, is discussed on these jail calls. Despite presenting numerous witnesses, D.A. Willis contacted no one. D.A. Willis and ADA Yolanda Mack admitted awareness of judges favoring Commissioner Arrington. She never fought for me as a victim, a Fulton County resident. She was always in the pocket of the commissioner and retaliated against me after I contacted the U.S. Department of Justice Office of Violence Against Women, because D.A. Willis repeatedly allowed my stalker to be released on bond for non-bondable crimes and failed to notify me of court proceedings repeatedly. She never mentioned to the court her conflict of interest and that was she was discussing my case with her close family friend and my stalker's attorney, Commissioner Marvin Arrington, before she was even sworn into office. The Georgia Democrat Party's decision to grant a convicted felon previously jailed for one year for aggravated stalking, allowing him access to voter data poses a serious risk to every Fulton woman. 
campaign software driven by GPS data exposes private information of registered voters without considering the implications of allowing unqualified individuals on the ballot. Today, accountability is paramount, especially with the Fulton County DA failing to assist citizens affected by domestic violence, stalking, or unjust incarceration. The establishment of PAC offers a crucial avenue of justice, addressing challenges faced by non-legal professionals in navigating complaints against misconduct. Recent legislative changes led by Commissioner Bob Ellis ensures that offices funded by Fulton County adhere to ethical standards, safeguarding the rights of citizens. The communities I represent are disproportionately affected by D.A. Willis's office, particularly those with underperforming schools. Despite laws mandating timely indictments, many languish in jail for months without resolution. Fulton County's jail stay average is 291 days. The national average is 30. 37% of inmates are unindicted in the jail. Three people unindicted have sat in the jail longer than two years. This prolonged detention often is overcrowded in overcrowded conditions, reflects a failure of justice and basic human rights. It's imperative that the legal system upholds its duty to prosecute promptly or release detainees. Each person in the jail is someone's child, parent, sibling, or loved one. The Georgia General Assembly set clear guidelines for D.A. Willis requiring, requiring her to indict individuals in custody within 90 days. Those arrested without bond must have their case presented to the grand jury within the same time frame. There are no exceptions to this law. If individuals have been incarcerated, for over 90 days, while the DA takes extended vacations with her special prosecutor, it's a direct insult to Fulton County families and those in jail. Consider this, sleeping on the floor for two years without facing a judge is not justice. It's a glaring example of inhumane neglect, which the law is designed to rectify, either prosecute or release. The ACLU reported 503 unindicted inmates that were incarcerated at least 90 days. 447 were sleeping on the floor. DA Willis is required to notify a judge if a person remains in jail on felony charges without indictment for more than 45 days. Sheriff Labatt faces a significant challenge with his colleague neglecting her duties, leaving him to manage an overcrowded jail. If DA Willis addressed the backlog as requested, lives could have been saved. Everyone deserves justice. By the end of 2023, 90% of the people in custody were black. This is not a time to give awards to people for failing to do their job. The Georgia General Assembly enacted a law mandating bail amounts to reflect a defendant's income. Excessive bonds can be rectified swiftly under these laws. Mismanagement in the DA's office shouldn't jeopardize someone's livelihood. Before I go to the next speaker, I want to say one last thing. DA Willis, backed by Commissioner Arrington, has spent millions prosecuting two celebrities. This allocation of funds adversely impacts the residents I represent. Standing up against political figures like Arrington and Willis is daunting. Living in a system that feels broken and corrupt and facing retaliation for protecting my family is disheartening. Yet I am supported by brave individuals that were not scared to stand next to me. There are also many brave individuals that have been contacting me about their stories. To those listening, don't hesitate to share your story. 
You have a community of supporters that will assist you. If you've been victimized by Commissioner Arrington or DA Willis, contact my office. Remember, victims should never blame themselves for things beyond their control. There's no excuse for anyone to violate, harass, intimidate, or stalk you. Trust your instincts and take steps to protect yourself. I'm going to have L.A. Pink from the Street Groomers um, come and speak. Good evening, everyone. I am Ellie Pink. I am the president and first lady of Street Groomers. I stand here today in honor of our state representative, Misha Maynard. I hate that she has to endure um, the things that she has had to endure, but we've been talking about this for years, the abandonment that Funny Willis have left in Fulton County, the abandonment that she have left to the families that have lost their loved ones to the jail, to the streets, and the police brutality are just the things that are going on in our system. We have Nigel Collins. We have Jam Jamarian Robinson. We have Kane Rogers. We have Jimmy Atchison. These cases are indicted cases that have been left undone. Money that have been gathered from our commissioners to attack these situations that have not been addressed yet. We have a young man that have been in jail for five years, waiting for just a trial, waiting to see a judge, and have not yet seen a judge. There are so many things that she can be doing instead of chasing Trump and chasing after the YSL case, a case with the YSL that we feel that is more of a love affair and a, a, a retaliation of someone that was that's in, it, it's in the indictment. So today we stand here because enough is enough. My district is somewhat big. I wanted to get some leaders from all sides. I'm going to have Mr. Mike Roberts come up and speak. Good morning. My name is Mike Russell. I'm a resident here in Atlanta. And I stand this morning uh, humbled and proud to be with Representative Maynard and L.A. Pink. These are two very strong, courageous women that do everything in their power to help those who are less fortunate, those who feel powerless in our county and in our city. L.A. Pink, for those of you who don't know her, she fights every day for the homeless, for the victims of our society. She feeds them out of her own pocket. Representative Maynard has done nothing but reach out and try to help everybody in our community, starting with the youngest amongst us. And I am appalled at what's happening in our community today. And it is time to end the cult of corruption here in Fulton County, starting with DA Fonnie Willis. She has done everything for everybody else except for the people of Fulton County. Why is she in New York and D.C. raising funds to be reelected as the DA in Fulton County? I've had victims come to me. I'm not a public official, but they know that I will stand up for them. I've had victims come to me, a family, a mother and a daughter, whose loved one was murdered over a year ago. Their trial of the perpetrator keeps being delayed because Fonnie Willis says she has more important things to do. What is more important than a murder trial? And this guy is out on bail with an ankle bracelet, and he's a previously convicted felon. Just this week, I had a businessman who had $30,000 stolen from him. The perpetrator, a known felon, had a large screen, flat screen television delivered to her residence. Atlanta Police Department did the investigation, handed the evidence to Fonnie Willis' office. Without contacting the victim, she dismissed the case. And then you have the overcrowding in the jail because she fails to prosecute when we have people there up to five years who have not seen a judge in a jail that's being mismanaged by Sheriff Labatt. 
the culture of corruption needs to end. And they're all together. Sheriff Labatt, Fonnie Willis, Marvin Arrington, Natalie Hall. You see one, you see them all. And every one of them have violated the trust of the public. Natalie Hall cost us a million dollars stalking a victim. She was not charged by Fonnie Willis, her friend. Let me say that again for those of you who don't know. Commissioner Hall cost the taxpayers of Fulton County a million dollars because she stalked her victim that worked for her, planted tracking devices in his vehicle. She was not prosecuted by our DA Fonnie Willis. Why? This corruption in Fulton County needs to end, and our lawmakers need to take them and hold them to account, and I'm hoping that the voters of Fulton County are paying attention and will vote for a clean slate of candidates and stop this cult of corruption in our county. I have two more individuals that have been personally impacted. My name is Joel Watley. My last name is W-H-A-T-L-E-Y. I'm the father of Casey Watley, who's been incarcerated in Fulton County Jail for five years now. And as we're starting to see, there's a pattern of corruption within the district attorney's office. My son, um, like I say, has been, been incarcerated five years. The attorney he had was a current uh, D, I mean, a, a prior di district attorney who had worked with Fannie Willis previously. Um, they came back and stated that my, they found evidence in my son's case after there was no evidence. They came back and said they found evidence and they had found fingerprints. Well, it came to find out in court that that was a lie. They said a second testing had been done and my son's fingerprints were found on the scene and that was a lie. He, the attorney, uh, Daryl Korn, tried to get my son to take a 20-year plea deal by falsifying evidence. And as you can see, corruption is just running rampant within Fulton County Jail. It's time for something to be done, man. We've got to do something. Y'all allowing these kids to be locked up, knowing that lady is corrupt. She spent the money that was meant to help the kids, and then she recoed them. She recoed all the young people after she spent the money that was meant to help them, to create a, a safe environment for them not to have to be out here in these gangs. Now let's ask her what she did with that money. It's time to do something to clean up Fulton County. We're not talking about tomorrow. We need to start today. You got over 800 people in that jail who shouldn't be there, haven't been indicted, they won't take them to trial. How is that justice? And you know what the crazy thing is? Fulton County sit back and watch it. Good, uh, good morning. My name is J. Wesley Day. That's J-E apostrophe space Wesley, W-E-S-L-E-Y, Day, D-A-Y, David Apple Yellow. I want to first give an honor to God who's head of my life, and I want to thank you, Representative Maynard, for giving me the courage to tell my story. In 2018, I was beaten in a hate crime. They called me homophobic slurs, fags, sissies, and I videotaped my assailants. You would think that it would be an open, shut case, but instead, the criminal justice system here in Fulton County vilified me. They first charged me with the fray. Then they upgraded that to a felony. As a result, I lost my job with Delta Airlines because I reported to Delta that I had a pending misdemeanor. Delta was the one who came and told me that I had a pending felony. As a result, fast forward nearly six years later, None of my ass 